One challenge in understanding gravity is appreciating escape velocity. In this tutorial, we'll explore the concepts behind escape velocity and derive an equation for determining the escape velocity on any given planet. Let's first get a feel for what we mean by escape velocity. As explored in our study of projectiles, what goes up must come down. We can look at it as an object shot straight up or as an object shot parallel to the surface of the planet. The bigger the initial velocity, the longer it stays up. But it always, eventually, comes down, right? But if we can keep increasing the time it takes to return, there must be a limit where the time becomes infinite, or where it can not only orbit the planet, but be so fast that it continues to move away from the planet forever, never returning. And this is escape velocity. Before we go on, let's make sure you've got this clear. Escape velocity refers to rockets or projectiles. We're not talking about rockets here. Rockets propel themselves. We're strictly talking about ballistic projectiles, objects that are given an initial velocity, then after that are only under the force of gravity. And as a projectile, the vertical component of the velocity continues to decrease as it moves further away from the planet, due to gravity. As the object goes further, the amount of acceleration due to gravity is less. The force decreases, causing it to continue slowing down, but more gradually as it gets further away. If our object can be shot a long ways from the planet, the influence of gravity gets to be very small, but it's always present. Let's lay out some variables. So we're talking about an initial velocity, and let's call it VE for escape velocity. Then we have our acceleration due to gravity. Now, what would we use for the acceleration due to gravity? We can't use 9.8 meters per second squared. We're talking about objects moving significant distances from the planet's surface. So we can't simply use g. The acceleration continues to change. So we have to represent a as a changing value in its full equation. For final velocity, we'll be looking for an object to have a final velocity of zero as we're looking for the point, or edge, of no return. And we'd have to say that displacement and time would both be infinity, as the object will never stop traveling. We could attempt to analyze this situation with kinematics equations. But the complication with escape velocity is we have a changing acceleration due to gravity, and we also have infinity plugged in in a number of areas. So instead, much easier to work with energy. The conservation of energy, E before equals E after. Before, when the object is just shot off, we have kinetic energy. Since the object has velocity, that is, escape velocity. And we have potential energy. It's relative to infinity the place we're heading. Now we don't have any work here, but it's worth noting that if the object was propelled like a rocket, we would have work here and the velocity to escape would be less. That being said, we're working on an escape velocity, assuming a simple projectile being shot off. So work here would be zero. Let's consider the E after. Now, after is actually the situation where the object has escaped. That is, it's reached infinity. Its velocity is basically zero. Since the velocity has reached zero, the kinetic energy must be zero. Also, since we're considering potential energy as relative to infinity, 
the potential energy at infinity would also be zero. So we're left with one half mv squared plus minus g m m over r as the energy before and zero as the energy after. We can cancel out the m's, that is the mass of our object, which apparently doesn't impact the escape velocity, and with some rearranging, we can solve for our escape velocity, VE. Let's consider our resulting equation. Note that it only depends on the mass of the planet and its radius, or how far from the center of mass we are when we shoot the projectile. You can plug in these values for any planet to discover the planet's escape velocity. For Earth, it's about 11 kilometers per second. For the Moon, it's about 2.4 kilometers per second. It's worth noting that these values are both far less than the speed of light. Therefore, the Earth's electromagnetic radiation continues on into space forever. The first transmissions ever made on Earth are still out there somewhere. We could figure out how far based on the time since transmission and the speed of light. And this could lead to some really interesting conversations about who might be listening and black holes and such, but we'll save that for a different tutorial. In this tutorial, we discussed the concept of escape velocity, what it is, and how to calculate it for any planet. We found that the conservation of energy was a great tool for analyzing these long-distance projectiles.